Right, good evening. Um, we just came back from a prayer vigil that was put together by the community. And at this prayer vigil, we had about 1,500 people who were here today to pray in support of the two kids that, are, um, that were shot today in the gym and also to pray for the families um, and to, also for the children that were in the gymnasium that either witnessed it, um, saw it, um, and, and all the reaction that, that they're feeling now after the fact. Um, you know, I, I've always found that Roswell is a very strong community, and, and they have come together as, as they always do when they have a crisis. Um, New Mexicans uh, come together every single time there is a crisis, whether we have a fire, whether we have a flood, or today a shooting within a school. Um, I'm honored to have the opportunity to be here in Roswell, um, to be of any assistance to make sure they have all of the assets the state police has available to them to make sure that this investigation goes forward as completely and fully as possible. We continue to work with local and state officials to support Roswell, both the investigations and in providing counseling and support to students and parents from Berendo Middle School. You know, it doesn't just affect the folks in the school. Um, we walked into a store uh, to pick up some things, and they weren't here, and they don't have children here. But they, too, are frightened um, just to have known that someone walked into a school. Um, and so it's, it, it has impacted the entire community. Um, there are grief counselors that are available, and the school district is also providing information directly to parents through their communications systems that they have already set up. A local behavioral health agency has been on the ground serving people throughout the day. Turquoise Health and Wellness have made their offices available all day tomorrow for people who want to just come in and talk. Um, they can be reached at 575-623-1488. And are located at 110 East Mescalero. The statewide crisis line is also um, available, including throughout the night, 24 hours, at 1 855 662 7474. I want to update you with some information that we have on the two students who were shot today Kendall Sanders has come out of surgery, and her condition has been upgraded to stable, and she is recovering. She suffered injuries to her right shoulder. Out of the respect and request of the family of the second child, we will not be disclosing the name. Um, he has, uh, was injured more severely than Kendall. He is in surgery for a second time this afternoon and his condition is still listed as critical. He suffered injuries to the side of his face and his neck. I ask that all New Mexicans please join us in praying for the families, praying for the kids, uh, making sure that they reach out and talk to people. I visited with a couple of young men that were in there as to how they were feeling, and they, one kid says, I'm just trying to hold it in. And I keep talking to him, but I said, why do you want to hold it in? He says, I just, I just don't want to let it out because then it won't stop. And these are kids that need the help. They need someone to lean on and, and, and make sure that they're getting this out so that it just doesn't eat them up. And so if you have some neighbor, a friend, or someone that you know, encourage them. Talk to you or talk to a friend, a neighbor, uh, or go down to the Turquoise uh, Health and Wellness uh, location because it, it has to begin, the community will begin healing as they start reaching out for these resources. Um, I also um, had talked earlier with Lieutenant Gary Smith, who was the officer who was simply dropping off his son at the school. Um, the principal was going to the door to lock the door um, when she saw Lieutenant Smith, Gary Smith, um, dropping off his son, she quickly hollered for him to come in and help. He went in went, and went into the gym. Um, when he walked into the gym, 
the young man had already put the gun down and had his hands up. I also visited today with Mr. Masterson, uh, John Masterson. Um, he's an amazing man. He was in the gym, on the gym floor. The eighth graders were on one side of the bleachers of the gym and the sixth and seventh graders on the other side. He was facing away from the shooter and the shooter was facing away from him. He hears the first shot and thinks that it's a firecracker. Um, he starts to turn and sees that the young man shoots and shoots and then is pointing the firearm at Mr. Masterson. Mr. Masterson then begins to talk to him to put it down. Um, the young man put the gun down and raised his hands. And at that time, he put the young man up against the wall uh, just as <coughs> Lieutenant Gary uh, Smith was arriving and they contained him. He said the students did an amazing job at getting out of the gym in an organized fashion. They had had these kind of drills before. They knew how and what to do and where to go. And they, there wasn't this you know, severe panic. Um, they, they just had understood from the previous um, uh, practices and, and, and the lessons that they had had on what do you do when you have a shooter in the school. Um, and they all quietly left the gym while police then took over the scene. Um, he is truly, uh, between he and Mr. Smith, the principal, um, and frankly, all the kids that you know kept calm, um, and two teachers. Uh, one of them was the security guy, um, the security officer at the school, and the other one was uh, a teacher who helped the young boy um, who had been injured the most. Um, it, and that was difficult. That was extremely difficult for for others to watch. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask. Uh, Chief Cassettes from the New Mexico State Police to um, address you. Good evening. Uh, thank you for your patience uh, as we work through this investigation. I can tell you that uh, today we've done over 60 interviews. Uh, I appreciate the assistance from our law enforcement partners uh, that have come to uh, this area to aid us and that are from here. Uh, this is an investigation that's uh, in-depth, time-consuming, very detailed and we can't do it alone so I appreciate that assistance uh, and again uh, we are we are uh, in the process of serving three search warrants uh, f uh, one is for the uh, individual or the uh, suspects locker the other one is for a bag and the uh, the third one is for a residence here in in the Roswell area uh, I don't have any information as to um, how that's progressing uh, we um, um, right now we've got uh, uh, the, the individual that uh, we believe is responsible for uh, this incident in state police custody. Uh, we are uh, uh, yet to determine where we're, we're taking him. Uh, we won't have that information as of yet. And that uh, we, we got some preliminary information that possibly some of the students were warned by the individual or the suspect prior to the shooting not to go to school. We have not cooperated that yet. I, I do not have a, a definitive answer as to whether that happened or not, but we'll certainly be looking into that. That's, uh, well, I can also talk about, uh, about the weapon. We've confirmed that it is a 20-gauge uh, shotgun, that the stock, the wood stock, was uh, sawed off, and it was contained with, uh, in a bag. There's been many questions as to how someone could uh, get a shotgun into a school, we believe that it was concealed where no one could see it. Other than that, it's about all the investigative update I can give. Um, speaking to this case, uh, again, we appreciate the assistance from law enforcement and also the school officials. I know that the governor spoke about Lieutenant Gary Smith. Many of you want to speak to him, but of course, please keep in mind that his child was there with him. He, made, he had to make the difficult decision as a parent or police officer to leave his child and go into that school Imagine having to make that decision, uh, and uh, right now he's uh, he's um, tending to his family's needs. So I'd I'd ask that you'd respect that. I can, I can try to answer a few of your questions if anybody has anything. So How many rounds? Are you aware that Mason Campbell is the shooter, a seventh grader at that school? Are you willing to confirm that at all? I can confirm that he's a seventh. Uh, that person is a seventh grader, a male, 
and uh, I believe 12 years of age. And you're confirming he's just No, I cannot long. confirm his, his name at this time. I cannot do that. How many rounds were in the shotgun? I don't I do not know that. Chief, has he been charged yet formally? He's in the process of being charged formally. The district attorney could speak to that. And what will those charges be? Um, but this time, I'm not really ready to release those as my investigators are working through it with the DA's office. So once those are filed, you all know that you can uh, gain access to those. We just haven't uh, finished up the, the paperwork and the process yet on that. Can you confirm that you served the search warrant at his home and that the suspect was in a psychiatric institution? I can confirm the first statement that we're serving a search warrant on the uh, individual's home. cannot confirm the second part. I can all. Let me finish. I can only confirm that we, he's in our custody still and we're working through that process. It's not that I can't tell you or I won't tell you. We just don't know that we're not there yet. Sorry, go ahead. Was it the residence on Sycamore? I know there was a I'm not sure of the actual address. I, I don't know. Hospital staff say the boy may have been targeted. These victims may have been targeted. Do you know anything about that? I believe the hospital staff is possibly speaking out of turn. We don't have any information like that now. Mm -hmm. Not to say it's true or not true. But we're still working and vetting through that information. Did your investigators find Uh, certainly they found unspent rounds. Oh, you mean shell casings that were fired out of the shotgun? Is that what you mean? Ammunition that was not fired. Was there, a, was there more ammunition found? In I can't speak to that right now. They're still processing that gymnasium area and also the library. Our main focus is the gymnasium. <laughs> uh, so once that's done, I, I don't have a detailed log or list or exact uh, uh, identification of what they found. They're still working through that. Can you, can you confirm if there were one or two shots? Can't right now. I'm not for sure. There's a report this was an isolated incident. A young man was targeted uh, over a female. Can you, do, can you uh, confirm that yet? Can't confirm that. I can, I can talk about, and I spoke to it earlier, that we believe we have the individual responsible for this. And I don't want anybody going away thinking, are there others involved? Uh, you know, we're still working through, of course, many interviews. We we'll believe that uh, the individual that, that pulled the trigger tonight is in custody. DA Hicks, does he have any charges of juvenile because of the severity of the, of the incident? At this time, the investigation hasn't been concluded, and so we haven't made a charging decision. Chief, Chief, about decision. you mentioned the warnings that you got from for people Can telling you that the kids might have been warned about this was going to happen? Can you talk a little bit more well, about that? Well, most of the early indication <laughs> came from uh, the re reporters and media, so we picked up on it. We were, off, we're actually looking at different social media uh, entities, we have some pretty good resources from the law enforcement to do that, but we're not there yet. I haven't had that assessment done to its fullest, so I don't know. It very well could be true, but we're going to vet that, find out the accurate information, and report that back to you when we can. Can you confirm any of those social media? Like, did he put anything on social media? Uh, I've seen a couple, but I don't know if it's from him. So. I have not seen any personally. I know my investigators are looking at that. We, you know, it's. We know that the kids these days communicate that way, so we're definitely looking into it. Uh, you know, so. Can How many children were in the gym at the time, sir? Do you know? Close to 500. You said uh, the weapon was concealed in a bag. We were hearing it was a musical <coughs> instrument case. Is so, that you know, it's a good question, and, and I'd like to go into detail of what that bag looked like, but I want all the interviews to be done, because I hate for someone to hear me talk about that description of that and then to get out there. So we'll work through it. I just wanted to make it clear that it was definitely concealed and, 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 and covertly snuck into that school. Do you know Chief, where where, where's, your, where's the suspect right now? State police custody. He probably want an exact location, <laughs> but right now, I'm not going to give it up for his safety, my officer's safety. And to the, 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 uh, the and to speak to the process, I want to make sure that there's no interruptions there. I can assure you that he has representation and family. Do you know where the shotgun came from, from family home? I do not know right now. Why was ATF involved in the search warrant seat, um, service at the Campbell residence? Well, um, probably because there was a, a, a <coughs> firearm involved. But I can tell you that uh, when the state police uh, through. Not just this incident, but many others through our partnerships with other agencies. Um, many times uh, with county, local, federal uh, uh, entities, they come out and assist us. So we probably called on them to help us out with that part of it. Sheriff Kuhn, you've got an active uh, shooting program with RISD. How well did that come into play today? You know, I was very proud of the, the staff and the, uh, the kids out there. We have gone to every school in Chavez County, every elementary, junior high, high school, and even the private schools, uh, and put on an active shooter class. Uh, I think without this class, 
there might have been some problems, but the teachers and the staff out there did everything they were supposed to do. It was nobody else hurt, and we have a very active uh, program going to the different schools with the active shooter program. So with that said, I uh, appreciate your time this evening. We're going to wrap it up uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll uh, notify you through the different PIOs uh, when we're going to have another. Uh, okay, Chief, 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 Chief. Sorry, one for the Lieutenant, Lieutenant Smith. Is he with uh, New Mexico State Police? Yes, he is. What did he do with his son? You mentioned that he had to make that hard decision to go inside. Did he just tell his little boy to go in the car and lock the doors? Right now, we're working through that. It's exactly what he did. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I, I didn't get into that part of, of what happened. Chief, and there's a lot of, can you just explain, just, was this random, can we say that it was random, it sounds like the kid was, he came in, I'm hearing different things of how he came in, but he wasn't actually like pointing at anyone, he just started shooting. Is that correct? Two I don't, kids in the gym. You know, at, at this point, I'd hate to talk to that topic, because I, I don't know yet. That's what uh, my criminal guys are doing, and my investigators, and the crime scene uh, unit. And, and they're very talented, they have a lot of resources, and they'll be able to help place a lot of that for all of us to understand. I understand those are some, those are some great questions. I just uh, don't have that answer yet until the investigation is done. And of course, we get it to uh, the district attorney to review that information. Chief, can you say, are the parents of the suspected shooter cooperative with you, with your investigators? Um, you know, at this point in time, I think what I'm going to do is, and, and I'd like to answer that question, I just don't have that information, sorry. Um, I think we're just going to wrap it up. Thank you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Want, I just want to urge the media. There are, you know, the social media, it, it's big. From, um, you know, the tweets that are out there, the um, Facebook, all of that stuff. Hospitals being quoted as saying things um, that they haven't even communicated with law enforcement, who's actually boots on the ground and doing the investigation here, but they're being quoted. Um, and they've not said a word to any of us. So be careful with what you're reporting. Um, when 60 kids have already been interviewed and there were 500 in that school, there's still a lot of work to be done. Don't rely on that social media to be factual. Don't rely on that social media to be the source of a story because then that just makes the rest of the community very nervous if it's that inaccurate and, and, and puts fear into people. So please make sure that from the press conferences that we're having is where you're getting your information because we will tell you the truth. If we can tell you, we're going to tell you the truth. Um, but all this social media is, it's really going, we just got a quote out of Wa uh, Washington and it's, it comes out of the hospital who hasn't even talked to anyone from here. Um, also, the other thing, um, um, the, uh, the family um, of the young boy has asked to be left you know, alone to respect uh, their privacy, the one that's in the hospital. Uh, he does not want, um, they don't want his name released, they don't want to be approached. Please give them that space. Um, he is in critical condition and they want to focus on, on their son and, and we'd appreciate it if, if you would do that. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Um.